Welcome to the Free and Open Mind Vcast. Hi, I'm Hardy Brooklyn. And I'm Michelle Wild. Where we want to get, get our guests to live their true self, and who are we? And what is your true passion? So I'm just going to do a quick recap and a couple of shout-outs. One is I really want to encourage people to check out the episode a couple of a couple of episodes ago that we did with the shock dress. Um, very, very good information and yeah. powerful information, yeah. especially with what's going on today and yeah. today's time. And her promo code is still available if you okay. want to sign up for any of her workshops that she has coming up. I just want to like reach out and ask people, are they working on your boundaries? Are you trying your boundaries? Are you trying boundaries in different situations that you haven't done it before? And how is that going? Like, Send us an email at fun at hardybrooklyn.com or make a comment on the video. So we kind of know that you have tried these things. And is consent working? Are people accepting the no's? Are people accepting you saying, no, I don't want to do this now? And how is that working for you? Hopefully we'll get some feedback. I don't know if anybody's actually even watching it because <laughs> I watch it on the YouTube channel and the number doesn't click up with a friend. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I don't know. I don't know how the numbers And also if you have any questions, too. If you want us to, any questions, if anything you want us to explore more. Yep. Shoot us an email. So I want to just do a quick thing that we're going to continue today talking about change. And we have a mutual acquaintance, a friend, an associate, that is going through change that they chose to make. Yes. And we are constantly encouraging people here to make a change in their life. And... I want to talk to Michelle and ask her some questions about this particular individual and the changes that they're going through so that we kind of understand that if you're going to make a change, you have to change all the aspects of it, whether yeah. it's the physical, the mental, the self, letting yourself go into the becoming that change person and the impact that it's going to have on other people. And, the, and your perception too, I think, has to change. So th this is a person I'm actually going through this with and with a number of people in my world right now. A bunch of people that were born gender male. Yeah. And decided that they were truly, really born gender female. Mm -hmm. And this individual I don't think it was a decision. I think it's just I think I think it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and this particular individual is very butchy in the way that they act. Yes. They are very aggressive. Aggressive. They have a lot of male traits to them. And a lot of the communication that happens around it is this person definitely has, and I guess they're doing construction in the neighborhood, <laughs> um, a lot of people, when I look at the person, they made a lot of change. Yeah. But they only changed, to me, the physical change. Yeah, the aesthetics. And then how would you say that that has gone over, or what is your interpretation of that, and what have they worked on to be able to accomplish that? Okay, so um, just to give you a little background, we're going to refer to her as Sabrina. Um, you know, we don't want anybody to know who it is. Um, and she grew up, she's actually sent me pictures, and she's grown up very, very, very dominant, very aggressive. And um, her perception of changing and doing it's more of like a transition um, is that she would just change her aesthetics, get surgery, start doing hormones and that everything would be great in her life like she literally thought that <laughs> like all of a sudden becoming a female is going to negate everything that she was as a male so, let me ask you a question. so as a lot of males right a lot of men think that they're taking ownership in especially white males they're taking ownership in their own self but not the self, the sense of the mental self, the yeah, physical yeah, self. They're yeah. like, hey, I'm a nice white guy with a dick, so every girl wants to sleep with me or wants to have me. Right. And they feel that their identity is so connected to that. And then they feel that once they lose that, how does that loss of identity being worked on in this situation? Um, you know, I honestly never talked about it with her, but I don't think it was about her identity wasn't around wrapped around having a dick and being able to fuck. I think it was wrapped around more being aggressive. Like she being, still has two children. Yes, she has two adult least, children that are males. Yes. 
she she still, even though she has had some surgeries, still predominantly acts as a male. Well, at this point, so what's happened and what I've noticed because I've known her for about a year or so, and this is when I met her is when she started her transition, her physical appearance, um, is that she has she's very female now in in a way that, and I hate to say that's female, but she's more in touch with her feelings because she's taking estrogen. So she's kind of forced on her to like have to cry and all that other stuff. But when she gets angry or something isn't going her way, she reverts right back to that male persona and gets really aggressive. And her whole body language changes, everything about her changes when she can't deal with the situation, when she doesn't have the, her words to use, or she just gets really, really angry. I have a bunch of friends that are going through this as well, that are doing hormone therapy, physical right. surgeries, things like that. And for them, a lot of it is in the, they spent a lot of time in therapy before they would get approved for the insurances and wherever the doctors to sign off on. And a lot of right. them spent a lot of time fundamentally working on what's it going to be like once that change happens. How am right. I going to mentally be able to mirror that change? Because again, these are people that typically are acting more on the butch side they come across as more masculine so if you would see them even when they are female right i still register them in my brain based on the way they act and are perceived right as a male right. even though when i met some when i have met some of them the first time i had no clue they were male by the physical appearance because they were so dolled up right right so h how do we how do we tell people it's okay to admit that you are going into this abyss of knowingness and that it's okay to reach out to your therapist or your professional or your coach to ask questions and understand that you have to change the physical and the mental to match? Because right. if it's not, it's, what, are, what are you actually changing? Well, that's one of the things I said to her. There's actually a lot of schools um, in New York City, I'm sure, and online there's probably a lot of stuff that teaches you how to act more feminine. How to sit, how to talk, how to eat, how to drink, everything. Like everything about you, well, they can teach you that. Let's back it up a little right. bit. It's, to me though, it's not more about acting. This is more about being. Well, yeah, so but, 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 but the first way to be is that you actually, it's like, you know, training somebody. So you have to give them the skills, right? I give you the skills and then you incorporate it into your life. That's okay. how I see it anyway. Right, so, um, so for this person, um, I have told her that because I'm just her friend, I'm not a therapist, I don't really have knowledge in it, and, and I really have no desire to, I just opened a door for her, right? That's all I want to do, that's all I'm capable of doing. And so I've told her many things about, you know, being feminine, not only from your mannerism, but like how you take care of yourself, your skin, your hair, everything, you know, like how you dress. You know, how you present yourself, you know, the things you say to people, right? So how, how do we... But, like, I get pushback. So how do we look at that? Like, so you're telling me feminine and by how you take care of yourself. And I'm thinking, like, wow, I'm in the burlesque community, I'm in the music community, and I'm in the burner community. And in all of those different communities, the females act very differently as far as self-care. Right. So but I mean, I, when I'm saying, like, I'm saying this, like, a very basic thing. We'll just talk about her hair. So, like, as a guy, I'm sure she had really short hair, and she just washed it and called it a day. So now that she's letting her hair grow longer, there's different things that you have to do to it. Condition it, you know, cut it, color, whatever it is that you're doing, right? That's not necessarily feminine or female. It's just that if you're changing your hair, you have to take care of it in a different way. And she doesn't know anything about that. You know, even though we have the whole internet that you can do research on, she doesn't have any, know anything about that. So I've just given her basic things about conditioning her skin because now she's taking estrogen and her skin is different, right? right. She's out in the sun and things are, you know, are changing. So, like, I told her, like, you need to do, you can't just wash your face with soap and water and call it a day anymore. Plus, you're over 50. So, like, you know, if you, you don't want to have wrinkles because you're going to because you lay in the sun all the time, you, should, you need to do X, Y, and Z to take care of yourself. So how do we really get to the root of it? Because a lot of these behaviors, as well as society's constructs, 
are really going to change for this person. The way that they are perceived yeah. is going to has has it's already, already yeah, dramatically yeah, changed. Yeah, and have, for a lot of my friends, it it has changed, and they are, like a lot of them are like, wow. I didn't realize I was going to be treated this way when I go out because I'm now a female. So now, <laughs> how do we like encourage people to say, listen, you need to fundamentally understand that when you go out, the world is going to be different. You're a different person. You're right. not that privileged white male. Yeah. You are now a female, which is basically the unprivileged people of society that you're looked on as a piece of meat, right. somebody else's toy. Right. Whatever it might be, but that's something that like a lot of these people have not really worked on, and they brush it off as they don't get me, or society doesn't understand me. Right. Let's let's let, when we look at that though, it's not that society doesn't understand you; it's that you have made a significant change from A to B, whatever it might be. Right. And you've changed the way that the world can see you from A to B. So now you look completely different. And we still have all the baggage, all the paperwork, all of the filing cabinets full of information mm. from the previous world. Right. How do we have those conversations with the people around us? How do we have those conversations even with our therapists? Because in multiple situations, the individuals that I know are not having those conversations with their therapists because they're afraid of those answers. Uh, uh, I don't think, no, I don't think that's that they're afraid of the answer. I really believe that people think they're going to transition and that whoever they were before is just going to slough off, like, you know, like skin shed their, they skin their, shed their skin every couple of months. No, it doesn't work that way. So it so could work that okay, way. So now, wait, but what an uh, interesting point I just thought of while you were saying that thing is, you know, you weren't accepted as a male, right? You didn't feel, you know, because you yourself didn't accept yourself as a male. Now you're transitioning over to a female, and now society isn't accepting you either, but you've accept yourself, right? Well, do you accept yourself? Because well, then that's, you accept the, that, and that's the question I'm asking. Because if you haven't really worked on you as a core person, right? Forget about your uh, gender identity. If you haven't worked through the issues... Because I'm sure when you felt like a woman, when felt like a girl when you were like five, I'm sure that brought some issues some, with your family members, with your friends, and things manifested themselves. Things that you hid forever and ever, you know. And so you really did need to work at the core of all of that and get yourself healthy before you can actually like be a full woman or man, whatever you're transitioning to. And it, it's really hard for people. Like the first thing I realized is yeah, I yeah. was just hiking with somebody that is going through this process is like we get to a bunch of trees and we're like oh everybody go take a pee quick and she was just like okay and then when she got to the tree she kind of had to think twice about it it was like now this is a whole logistical thing that i haven't mentally changed in my mind right that what is society finds is acceptable, what am I going to be comfortable doing? And that's just a small example of going to the bathroom with a bunch of guys after right. a hiking trip. Right, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's like, whoa. Like the first time that happens, the the emotional and the mental stuff that you're going through, you need to work through and have those conversations to be prepared for this. Because if somebody's going through this change that they really want and they really desire, don't we want them to have the best outcome? Yes, but it, yes, definitely, definitely. Because the truth of the matter is, you can't run away from yourself. It doesn't make it to what gender you are. You can't run away from yourself. So whatever issues you had, you know, as the male, you're just carrying it over to the female. You, 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 I, in my friend's case, I think she was running away from being male, right? I would agree. I think that they were that there was a connotation that she had around her male persona right based on the the kids the family life, right. the job that she's the yes. job that yes. she did and and the way that she did her job right i mean it was all conducted to a passive aggressive yeah. female that's how she worked the job yeah. but she came across as oh i'm the tough person right well she you know over exaggerated being a male because in her head she felt like she was a female so that's what she projected out into the world but so one of the things uh, we, 
you know, one of the doors I opened for her was that, you know, the first she's had uh, this, she just had second surgery, uh, a facelift, and the first surgery she got her face all done, and she, um, and I said to her one day, I said, you know, it's all amazing you're doing all this stuff, but it's all aesthetics. Like, because I see you, you're still, you know, she's like, do I look, do I look more like a female? I said, it, it's, it's not really just about the way you look. It's like the whole kind of package, you know what I mean? It's so, like, have you, right, have you worked on your, you know, you go into therapy, are you going to therapy just so they can sign off so you can have your dick cut off? Is that why you're really just going? Just going, I'll just say or whatever. Right, <laughs> whatever. I just, I'm just talking just to get, just to get the doctor to sign off on the paperwork. I said, but this is the problem. You need to talk to your therapist. You need to start from, you know, from the beginning, like I talked the first therapy that I got involved in was rebirthing. You need to start from the beginning and be reborn again, and be re reborn again as a female. But this time, a healthy female, a healthy, a person that's already dealt with all their issues, cried about whatever happened to them as a kid, and still okay crying about it today. Yes, 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 and, and learn to become a whole person. You know, like you, again, you can't <coughs> run away from yourself. It's just not possible. And you know, once I think you let you go through that process and you become a healthier person and then you become that healthy female, I think everything kind of falls into place. So whatever anybody says to you out there, it's not going to bother you because now you're standing firmly two feet on your ground, rooted in the person that you are, confident in the person that you are, happy in the person that you are. And that's what we, when we're talking about change in your life, that's fundamentally the type of change we're trying to encourage you to make. It's, it's a change that is going to be your being, yeah. not just how you dress, not just how you're perceived by the or world. Or getting a new job or how, anything like how that. How you're perceived <laughs> by yourself and how you interact with all of those things and how you learn and grow and change with those. As I've been going through this whole life coaching programs, I have significantly changed my perceptions on a lot of things. Plus COVID, a million things. Yeah. And when I look at it and I think about my friends that are going through these gender modifications, and I think about how they're like having an expectation that everything's going to be all better once they're right, changed. Right, right. <laughs> in life and in everything else, nothing's ever just better. You yeah. kind of need to work on it. It's a, it's an ongoing art project I look right. at. Right, it, it is. On, on, yes. my, on, it is. on my biggest ongoing project because... Right. What I what I react to, how I react to things today, is very different than it was a year ago, than it was two years ago, than it was right. ten years ago. And so, all of these people that are going through genders, like let's let's look at the deep root in this. Say, listen, now when I walk out of the house, I am a piece of meat. Right. I am not that boy who can walk down the block anonymously. Right. Or have a couple of people say hi to them because they recognize me. I am now a female. That if I wear a short skirt, I'm going to get these things from society's constructs. Even though I don't want them or I might want them, they might be cool in the beginning. But as women get older, they get old. <laughs> and how do I process that, that I was one of those people, and fundamentally still am, but I'm, I haven't been able to work through that mentally. Yeah, so again, like, you know, the same um, with being in a job that you don't really like it's because you feel like you're not getting your worth or your value right that's a big part of it and, and i think you know that's a big part for my friend uh sabrina um so we look at that and, and right now with we're right now going through the pandemic right. of 2020 and shall there be more to come <laughs> and when we look at that and we look at people going through these different changes and different life changes and whether they're changing from male to female or female to male or whatever they are making that change what is like i, I don't see them looking at that fundamental bottom right well because i don't think they think it's important again i think they think they're running away but i am a big huge proponent of therapy and i've been to therapy lots of times for many years and reading books I've read a lot of books and like I might might have gotten one sentence out of a book that completely changed my life and opened my mind and changed my perception so just keep on working on yourself whether it's going and I told this person Sabrina you need to go to a transgender group 
And you need to be part of a transgender group really because important. you know something. There's things that you're going through. I have no clue. I've been a woman my whole life. You know, I don't know what you're. I have no idea what you're going through. You need to talk to other people that are going through the same thing yeah. as you are. Getting feedback and talking to them. That's the one aspect. And the other aspect is working on yourself. Going to therapy. Going to therapy groups that are geared towards this. That are working on you know people's core issues and dealing with the, the stressors that they had to deal with being a woman in a boy's body. And, and what's more amazing is that in 2020, we can participate in those groups online yes. because of the pandemic. Yes. A lot of them have gone online, yes. so, so if you, you don't, don't yes. even have to deal with one right. in your own community. Right. And because of the online world, you can be totally anonymous. Right. Yes. I belong to a bunch of online self-improvement groups. And there are people that come through and use fake names. Right. And there are people that come through and never turn their video on. Right. I mean, oh, my camera know. doesn't work. Right. Whatever the excuse may right. we know that that's just a construct answer. Right. So they, are, they need get, to remain in right. As I just want to say one thing, though. All this stuff that I've been telling her since the day I met her, <laughs> um, she, it's like she didn't want to. Because I, I think she knew that there was a lot, she had a lot of baggage. We all have been, had traumatic childhood in one way or another, okay? And, and nobody's life is exactly perfect, even if you have a gazillion million dollars, right? So she, and, and again, right, so she, um, you know, she was fighting it. And she wasn't fighting me, and it, she was fighting all the stuff that she would have to deal with. Because you know what? It's not easy. No, it's, it's not. It's difficult. It's gut wrenching, and and the worst part is sitting home home alone. And she said this to me, like I'm so lonely. I said, you know what? You have to sit with that. There is nothing I could do. There is nothing. Right. Me sitting next to you is not going to change that loneliness feeling. Right. You need to sit with those feelings. You have to be a big girl, and put your big girl pants on, and like you have to just work through it. And it's not like just, a marathon, a 26 mile. You can make it. You can do it. And it's not just that physical change that that these people are going through that are going to make that lonely feeling go away. Right. And hopefully they won't misuse the change. Right. Just, as, as a woman, it's a lot easier to get someone to go home with you. Right. So you don't have that loneliness. Right. And, you know, what is the ultimate end game Right, goal? and then and that's, that's what, what I'm saying. You're perpetuating, you know, the same issues you had as the male. You're just going to bring it over to being a female. Right. So, like, you know, what kind of changes are you really making? What, you, you change your face and now you're putting a dress on and wearing makeup? So, so I really want to encourage anybody that listens to any of my podcasts, like, seek professional health. Yes. Seek yes. qualified mental health. Yes. Because, and if you can't get it in your hometown, Google the interwebs. Yeah, YouTube. There's somebody that will do it for you. And there's places on YouTube that, are, that you can watch videos of and how to pick the right person for yourself. Yes. And there's a million gazillion books out there, you know, that you could just start reading. And, and to do research on a therapist that's going to be able to help you with you and your issues and be empathetic to what you're going through. Just to recap, do you think that Sabrina uh, is going to have a positive outcome or do you think that she's going to be able to work through these issues or I mean, it's I'm, going to be more of uh, setback suicide? I'm, I mean, I'd like to think the best for her. I honestly would. I don't know if she has the wherewithal to do it. I mean, she's already having a rough time and she just took like, you know, one step into finding out about herself. So I really don't know. I don't know if she's strong enough to do that, you know, or she's just going to revert back to, you know, being the person she was, you know, except that she's wearing a dress. Right. And that's, and that's the thing is that when we're encouraging change and we're trying to get you to change, you have to really think deep about all of the change that has to happen to make that change really be impactful and effective. If we change the way we think, we also have to change the way we act. Right. If we change the way we look, we have to change the way we think and the way we act. So we have to think about all of those pers persons, and we also have to think about of the impact that that's going to happen on all of everybody around us. Right, especially if you have kids, if you're going through a transition. <laughs> and we have to make that part of the learning process. Yeah. Learn how to respond to the reactions. Learn how to have those impactful statements and those conversations with people. And fundamentally, why am I doing this change? Is it to run away from something or to run to something? That's a good point. i just like to add the one last thing I want to say is learn how to be compassionate with yourself when you're going through change. You have to learn to be really kind and loving to yourself and give yourself a break. Because even if you do one little thing, you know, 
in a day that's still progress. And get help from professionals. Get help online. Get help from communities. Vet those communities because there's yep. a lot of crap out there and there's a lot of amazing stuff out there. Right. But if you need help, reach out to us at funandhardybrooklyn.com. Our website is thefreeandopenmind.com where we are the Free and Open Mind Vcast where who are you? And what is your true passion? I'm Hardy Brooklyn. And I'm Michelle Wilde. Till next episode. Thank you. Thank you.